So my name is Maxwell Alexander. Uh, I was born here in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, grew up here basically my entire life. Oh God, um, it was difficult. You know, it wasn't until I was about 14 that I really came into like who I was and stuff like that and trying to hide it through like school and everything was, was really, really difficult for me. You know, um, I always tried to not be overly flamboyant. I tried to, you know, uh, dress differently. I tried to, you know, wear all the things that like the other kids were wearing and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it just, it didn't feel like me. Um, I felt like a totally different version of myself, which was not okay. And dealing with all the bullying and stuff like that that came of it, you know, like, because people could see that, like, I was posing as something that I wasn't. And I think a lot of people saw through that. So with all the bullying through, like, high school and, and junior high and things, it was, it was a really, really difficult period of my life before I was finally able to, you know, come out and be who I wanted to be. And even during that process of finding that out, um, you know, coming out to my parents and everything was was a very, very scary feeling. You know, living in secret of who you are and having to fake um, a life, I, I don't think anybody should ever have to go through that. It's a very, very painful experience, for sure. The gay bashing, big time. Yeah. Um, so a year and a half ago, um, I was on a camping trip with some friends and I went, uh, me, I obviously, like, I mean, look at me, I'm super flamboyant, you know, I'm very out there, I'm very proud of who I am. Um, but uh, I guess other people in this campground did not very much appreciate it. And I went on a walk to um, go and uh, get some firewood and whatever, and I was jumped. Um, I, they uh, put a mask over my face. Uh, they beat me to the ground. They broke four of my vertebrae, broke three of my ribs, um, and uh, almost paralyzed me. Uh, nobody in the campground who heard me screaming said or did anything. A lot of them came out of their camper, saw what was going on and just went back inside like it was none of their business, even though somebody was being beaten the crap out of. Um, and uh, when it was all over, I literally could not walk and I had to crawl on my arms in order to be able to get to somebody's camper and I banged on their door. <laughs> and um, asked them to call the police, asked them to help me. And even the person who ended up calling the police and stuff like that uh, was very, very rude to me. It was like, this isn't my issue. I shouldn't have to deal with this and whatever else. It's like, I'm beaten, bruised, bloody, you know, trying to get help. And the fact that this person was not willing to, even, like almost not willing to help me was terrifying. I spent six months in the hospital um, with the doctors basically telling me that um, I might not ever walk again, that if I cough the wrong way, um, that I could literally paralyze myself. Um, so they had me in like a body cast from like the waist up to hold my back and everything in place. Um, it, it was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. And that wasn't the only time that something bad has happened. Um, I was walking home from Twisted Element nightclub here in Calgary, Alberta one night and had three guys pull a knife on me. Um, and then on top of that, you know, just like everyday life, you know, I'll be walking down the street and somebody will call me a faggot or a fucking fag or, um, you know, uh, just whatever gay slur that comes to the top of their head without even notice. And it's a real struggle to live in a city like this that's so conservative, that doesn't have a very good, uh, big um, gay population to begin with, um, and a very good like sense of community. 
you know, like, I mean, we do have a community and for the most part, we try and help each other out and stuff, but it's not like Vancouver or Toronto or anything like that. But I mean, that kind of thing can happen anywhere. But that's been the biggest struggle is just like being afraid to walk outside past like 11 o'clock p.m. because I'm afraid that I'm going to get hurt or I'm going to wind up back in the hospital or worse, dead. That scares the living crap out of me. I'm always afraid for my life. No matter where I go, no matter what street I walk down, whether it be daytime or nighttime, it can happen at any point. I think the thing that keeps me going is that I am a representation of our community and I would not be doing our community any sort of justice by hiding away in my house and dressing down or dumbing down myself or trying to act more straight or anything like that. You know, I want to be, yes, I'm scared, but I want youth to look at me walking down the street and be like, he's got it. Like, if he can do it, so can I. And I shouldn't be afraid. I should be, I should be proud of who I am. You know, that's what I want to convey. Yes, I'm scared for my life every single day, but I mean, I need to be an inspiration to others. And I also want to be the person to show the rest of the world that just because of my sexuality doesn't mean I can't do all the things that everybody else does. Doesn't mean that I'm any different than any other human being. You know, what happens in my bedroom is my business. It's none of yours. And if it doesn't affect you in a personal way, then why do you care so much? You know, so like... That's why I dress the way that I do. That's why I'm overly flamboyant and things like that is because it's tr being true to who I am. I'm not going to sit here and have somebody dictate how I should be. It, that's a real big struggle for me because I, I would like to get more involved in doing that. Um, for me... I'm still dealing with a lot of the traumas and stuff like that in my life. You know, I have, I have outlets that I use, like TikTok, for example, um, and uh, Instagram and things like that. I also have a Discord server uh, called Club 96 uh, that I use, and it's, it's a way for me to help my community. You know, um, I'm definitely a, a very, very big advocate for mental health. Um, so I try and put out into the world um, this sense of belonging, this sense that like, no matter what anxieties, no matter what traumas you have, that I will be a safe space for those people. You know, that's what my TikTok is, that's what my Instagram is, that's what my Discord is. It's a safe place for people to come and have a sense of belonging and a sense of community and not feel so afraid. Uh, within Calgary, you know, there are a lot of amazing resources. I can't name some of them off the top of my head at the moment. Um, but there's a lot of uh, uh, youth groups. Um, the Gay Straight Alliance is in school. I would definitely suggest for like any youth that are in school, find your Gay Straight Alliance or find your, um, you know, your Alliance members and stuff like that. and. Um, and go to them and talk to them. You know, that's what they're there for. Uh, there's a lot more people that are a lot stronger than I am to be able to deal with that kind of thing. But, you know, if anybody ever needed a shoulder to cry on or needed somebody to talk to, I'm always open. You know, my phone is always on. Um, and, you know, I am, uh, like, I want there to be more safe spaces within Calgary. I don't feel like there was enough safe spaces in Calgary to begin with. And, you know, yeah, the gay clubs and stuff like that are great for people of age, but for youth, I don't feel like there's enough resources in the city. Absolutely. I am in therapy. I go to therapy twice a week. I have a psychologist. I have a psychiatrist to help me with uh, medications and stuff like that to help with my anxiety, my PTSD. Uh, my depression that has uh, evolved over the years because of all the trauma that I've been through. You know, I think anybody who has any sort of trauma in their life, anxiety, depression, uh, PTSD, any sort of mental health issues, you know, go and seek help.
go and talk to a professional because there are professionals out there that want to help you. You know, Kids Help Phone is another great resource. Um, I've used the Distress Center on numerous occasions where I have felt suicidal, where I have wanted to end my life. Um, you know, I, without them, I wouldn't be here today. You know, four years ago, I tried to kill myself. I was this close. <laughs> And I'm so happy that I had the doctors and the therapy that I had to help me get through that because I wouldn't be the person I am today and I wouldn't even be here. What stopped me was the love that I felt from my mom um, and like I said, the therapy and uh, the um, mental health ward at the Peter Lougheed Hospital, the nurses there were so kind in helping me truly understand what it was that I was going through, you know, and just being, not so much being like talking about like the, the actual chemical imbalances and stuff like that in my brain, but just like literally being there to say that, hey, everything's going to be okay. You're going to be all right. You know, you'll get through this. You're stronger than you give yourself credit for and giving me the strength and courage to be able to go through and see, you know, the person that I really could be. Um, my mother of all, <sighs> sorry. <laughs> my mom is the greatest gift in the world. She has seen everything that I've been through. And she is the first person to stand up and say, no, this isn't right. I think without my mother to help me through a lot of this, I, I wouldn't be here today. She's, she's my angel. And I, I don't know what I would do without her. She, she's the one who got me through all of this. Uh, Take your time. My message to the world, be kind. It takes no effort to be kind. To give somebody a smile walking down the street because you don't know what that smile will do for someone. They could be on their way to go and kill themselves. They could be on their way to smoke a pipe and overdose. And that little bit of kindness could change their life. That's literally all it takes. Before you open your mouth, think of the repercussions of what it is that you're about to say. Because although people say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, that is a lie. Words do hurt. And all it takes is a few kind words to say, I love you. You're strong. You are powerful, you are courageous, you are capable. And you could change somebody's outlook on life completely. So be kind in everything that you do. And before you open your mouth, think about the words that are about to come out of your mouth and how they're gonna affect someone. That's all it takes.